Enthusiastic introduction, Nick here with another review. Today we've got the Beta FPV 95X V3. Three. So we're going to take a look and see if it's as good as it looks. So first I'm going to start off with things I like about the 95X V3. Um, I really do like the frame design. It feels much more refined um, than the previous two versions. Uh, you can tell they put a lot of thought into it. This is some nice molded plastic, pretty thick. The colored bumpers are obviously pretty cool. Um, have a very clean spot for a Vista or you know any 16 by 16 or 20 by 20, I believe, uh, stack here. Um, all the components are tucked nicely under this uh, little piece of plastic here. You can see there's the there's the Vista down there. I also really like the flight controller that it came with. Um, this is, I think, a V4. And the main reason I like the flight controller is it has the plug and play for both the receiver and the DJI system. So you only have to solder onto the DJI a Vista unit and onto the receiver, and then it just plugs right into the flight controller. So super easy, easy to swap parts from other builds. I like the, uh, it's got a cool little battery strap mount very clean just slip a battery in there strap it up um, it's got some nice little sort of gel uh, dampeners here for the camera which is also nice um, unfortunately it didn't come with the naked GoPro mount it just comes with the uh, naked Insta360 Go mount so they did include a 3d print file for this TPU part so I had my uh, my buddy print that out my buddy Matt I'll put a link down in the description if you're anyone's from Southern California and needs a uh, some affordable 3d printing done I'll put his uh, info down in the description so yeah I like the flight controller I like the frame um, one uh, <clears throat> one small criticism about the frame is I would still suggest that they mount the Vista vertically because if you look down here there you're losing you know, that maybe 10% of your thrust right on the inside here, on the inside of where the props are, because the Vista unit, I mean, the Vista unit is just blocking that airflow. It does look cleaner, but the thing is, like, the height they're saving doesn't really matter, in my opinion, because you've got, if you're gonna have a naked camera up here, which is the whole point, it's gonna be taking up this much height anyway, so. There's no reason to have such a low profile build down here, in my opinion. Um, another issue for those of you looking at using the standard Vista camera, unfortunately the angle is limited. Like if I wanted to lower this, I wouldn't have room then to lower this camera just because they're so close right here. Um, however, you know, using the any of the Nebula or Nebula Pro cameras would be just fine. I think that's really what it was designed for, but they did still include the mounts for both cameras. Now to the things I don't like about the quad, and I don't know, <clears throat> I can't tell if it's the motors, the props, the tune, but every time I flew this thing, the motors came down smoking hot. I tried the Beta FPV tune, I tried Albert Kim's tune, I tried default PIDs on Betaflight. I even flashed Emu Flight on default PIDs and these motors, particularly these back motors, just continue to come in smoking hot. So I don't know. I did some motor testing in Betaflight and it, the motors all sounded pretty smooth. I tried different props, three bladed props, that didn't help. I don't know if it's just something wrong with this particular build here, but uh, it's a big issue and the flight footage, regardless of the tune, was Still a little wobbly at best. Um, there's some jello in the camera. Um, it was not locked in. Uh, the good news is if you're using a naked GoPro, Real Steady Go gets rid of all that, all the little jitters as it always does with its magic. Um, but I would still prefer a better flying quad. It, this thing is shaky in the air, wobbly. <clears throat> so unfortunately, I can't recommend this thing uh, as it stands. I would do recommend the frame. I do recommend the flight controller. Uh, the props are cool. The five-bladed props definitely are quieter than the typical uh, three-bladed props um, that most folks use on these. So I don't mind that. Um, unfortunately though, whatever it is, I, I, I'm assuming it's maybe the motors, maybe I just got a bad batch. 
Um, but if I have time, I'm curious to try it on the typical 1204 RC and power 5,000 KV motors. Um, I'll, I know a lot of folks run these on two and a half inch and have had good luck. So I do have a few of those spares lying around. So I might end up trying those and, and maybe I'll post an update if anyone's interested in that. But moving on from this, I want to talk about the Naked GoPro Cinewhoop class as a whole. And I've talked about this a little bit in my previous video, so I'm not going to get too far into it. But um, my, my, general, my general summary is, look, if you go up to a three inch version of this, and that's what my Cinenic build is, you can see a link to that on my channel, my own custom Cinewhoop build. You're only gaining about an inch of footprint. And with that inch of footprint, you're losing many grams in weight because the three inch props are more efficient and you're gaining at least two minutes of flight. Um, so I still don't know why these companies aren't making three inch versions of the Naked Cinewhoops. They're lightweight and it's so much quieter. Um, overall, highly recommend go with the three inch 1204s with the gem fan tri blades you're getting great fly times it's quiet it's not going to disturb anybody and you can even they're even more powerful you can even do acro and things like that and as far as batteries go i initially tried it on this 524s and i was only getting about two minutes and 45 seconds of flight so i was pretty disappointed in that beta fpv recommends a 450 4s which i can't even imagine using um i don't have any of those so i can't test them but Flight times are so low on the 520. On the 550, I was getting three and a half minutes, which was great. And then I, on the 650, I was getting like 345. So um, I would highly recommend going with the 650 4S. And uh, having said all that, I'm gonna leave you guys with uh, one flight with this Naked Go Pro on this thing, stabilized with real steady go. And as you can see, everything still looks great. Having said everything I said, if you're using a stabilized naked camera it's probably going to remove all the jitters um, so I'm going to leave you with that footage and links to all the products down in the description if you want the full assembled build or just the kit uh, and any of those links you use I do get a small commission so I appreciate using those links and uh, I'll see you guys next time bye